I'm working on this 1961 wheel horse, model 401. In the last video, I got the main parts of the rear half together. Now I'm going to start getting the front parts together. Here's the parts I'm working on next. First I'm going to scrape the chunks off, then I'll degrease them. After degreasing, I'm going to wire brush everything. Just so it's not too boring, I'll just show one of each type of part. There's two spindles, I'll show one. There's some nuts and bolts, I'll show one of each type. And I'll spray everything down with WD-40. These wheels have a bunch of dried up grease, dirt, and grass clippings. I'm going to use some of this kerosene that I cleaned the other parts with. And then I'll use a wire brush on them. That paint's not holding up to the wire brush very well. And it didn't hold up to the kerosene like usual either. That's the way I treat all the wheel horse wheels I clean up. And wheel horse paint holds up to that pretty well. There's some paint brush marks on the tire there. So these were brush painted at one time. This one here has an original style valve stem with the usual rust around the hole from the calcium chloride. This tube's been replaced at some point. It's got a modern style stem and plastic cap. And it has a little bit of air still with no liquid coming out. This one's rusted or corroded on there. I might not get that off without damaging it. It may still have some calcium chloride in it. For now I'm going to clean them and put them back on. 
I'll have to take those apart later, sandblast the rims and repaint them. You have to get the calcium chloride out of the bottom of the rust pits or it'll just rust right back through the new paint. You can tell by the size of the bumps around the valve stem holes that both rims still have calcium chloride down in the rust pits. These bumps under the paint are full of rust. I'm going to scrape off the big chunks before I wire brush that part. I'm going to put the spindles on here. Now for the other parts. This bolt gets tight in the hole here. Don't know if it's the bolt or the hole. I'm going to try a tap first. That worked. The tie rod hole should be on the left side, and I can tell which way is down from the marks the bolt left here. It feels like the bolt runs out of threads before it clamps on the steering link, so that's where I'm going to tighten the lock nut. Well, I forgot to grease the stuff, so I got to take it back apart. This could be the same way on this side. Yep, got to use the tap. This side also runs out of threads before it tightens on the steering link. So that's where I'll tighten the lock nut. One of the studs on this tie rod is shorter. And it needs to go in this cast steering gear arm. The stud can't come out the other side or it'll run into the steering gear. So it has to have a washer of some type to space it down. This tractor had this lock washer there, so that's what I'll use. As long as this stud's below flush here, it'll work.
you're looking under the front of the frame where the steering gear bolts on these parts are rubbing against each other so you need some grease in there and on the bolt too Here's another lock nut adjustment. First when I tighten the lock nut it should clamp the part. Then I back off a little at a time until it moves freely. You're looking at the lock nut on the axle bolt where I fixed the threads. I wanted to show there's still plenty of clearance in there where I made the bolt longer. More grease to put the wheels on. Make sure you have at least one washer under the snap ring or else a couple of bad things could happen. That looks good there. It all moves around like it should. Well, that's good enough to move it around easy. Normally I would take the tires off the rims and fix those calcium rust pits before putting them back on. But winter's here and I want to bolt on as many parts as I can before it's too cold to work outside. Now for this center section. I put the bolts back in the holes when I took it apart. Some of the paint's dried up and flaking off, and some of the paint was protected by grease and dirt. I'm going to scrape off the chunks first. Since only part of it needs degreased, I'm going to use gum out and wipe it off. The mounting tab for the hood's bent down on this one side. I'm going to start on this little corner where it looks bent the most. The top and bottom parts are both bent, but I need to straighten them one at a time.
Now they look about the same. That should work. This bigger wire brush has smaller wire on it, so it's fairly soft for a wire brush. But it don't get in the corners very well. So I have to do that part by hand. I'm going to make sure the grease zerk works. I'll bolt this on even though it's wet. It'll dry up and look like the rest of it next week. I'll shift this one direction in the bolt slop to keep it square to the frame. And I think I'll push it towards the rear. I'll go ahead and wipe up some of the puddles. Here's a look at that serial number tag. I have an original condition 1960 tractor with this type of tag. The numbers are thin and not stamped very deep. So if your tag's rusted enough for the plating to be gone like this one, the numbers may not be visible. So I have a serial number tag, but I don't know the serial number. Well, that's as far as I'm going this time, and here's what it looks like. It's looking pretty good so far. Next time, I'll start with the steering shaft and the implement lift lever. Alright, that's it.